Hey everybody, Griffin Hales with Electric Bike Report. And today we're bringing you our review of the Mod Black. This is a very unique and stylish looking e-bike that does include full suspension and it's great for commuting and some light off-duty mountain biking as well. Great for those trails if that's part of your daily commute. Today I'm gonna to be walking you through all the specs, features, and performance of this bike. So stick with us for the full review. Now with the Mod Black, it's hard to miss the unique look of this bike. That's because it's blending two different styles together pretty well. It is a commuter, but it does have several different features that it's borrowed from mountain bikes. Now, it is capable of some lighter off-duty trails, but it's by no means something that is ultra aggressive in the mountain biking world. What that adds up to is a very comfortable commuter with some versatility to its game. Now, the more mountain bike features that you'll notice include the front fork, the rear air suspension as well, it's got knobby three inch wide tires and the mid-drive motor. On the more commuter uh, aspect of the bike though, you'll notice it does have a rear rack, kickstand, mounting points for a front basket, a modest seven gear drivetrain, and a pretty squishy gel seat as well. Now, this is actually very nice how it comes together because I know that a lot of people out there, they're only looking for one bike. Some people are very into biking. They own two or three different bikes for different use cases. But the good news about e-bikes is that with that motor on there, you can get a lot of versatility in how you use it, and that's what this is doing and blending together almost seamlessly. It's a great commuter, but if you're that type of person who thinks that every now and then they want to go off-roading just a little bit, this is that bike that's going to really fit that need and serve you well. Now, we're going to dive into the full feel and performance of this bike, but if you want the full breakdown of the spec sheet, we're going to leave a link in the description below where you can head to the Electric Bike Report website where we detail everything you need to know about this bike. Now for the first test on the Mod Black, we did our brake test. What we do is we bring the bike up to a 20 mile per hour speed and come to a stop as quickly and safely as we can. We do this multiple times so that we can take an average to get an overall idea of how we think the braking capabilities are on this bike. Now the Mod Black came to a stop in an average of 20 feet and 8 inches, which is a pretty respectable result. Now this bike is equipped with Zoom hydraulic disc brakes on 180 millimeter rotors. It's a brake setup that we have seen very commonly across direct-to-consumer brands, uh, especially over the last year and a half or two years, it's become increasingly popular. They've held up well in the long term and in the short term. They're pretty good brakes overall. Now, the one thing to note is, again, this bike is more of a commuter, so it's a little bit destined for flatter terrain and some lighter off-roading. If you are trying to do anything a little bit more steep in the mountain bike world, just bear in mind it's not like a four-piston hydraulic disc brake which will give you very good stopping power, but again, for the situations that this bike I think is built for, I think it's a pretty good brake set. Now the next test that we put the Mod Black through was a range test. The EBR range test we do two different times. We do it once on the highest level of assist and once on the lowest level of assist where it still feels like you're getting constant uh, help from the motor. Now what this does is it gives us our bookends for a rough idea of real world battery range, and this is the test where the Mod Black truly shined. Now on the max power range test, it got about 30 miles, about an hour and a half ride time at an 18 mile per hour clip. And then on the minimum pedal assist uh, range test, we got an astounding 84 miles, almost six hours of ride time at a 15 mile per hour pace. Now that is actually one of the best range test results we have ever recorded here at EBR. Now this is all done off of the 557 watt hour battery that is integrated into the frame right there. And that is paired with a 350 watt mid-drive Shangi motor. So a couple of thoughts just overall on this is number one, when you're out there riding and pedaling on the Mod Black, something that I really appreciate is this is one of those bikes that does not take over for you, but it just makes you feel like an enhanced version of yourself. Both on PAS1 and PAS5, I still felt like I was giving input into the bike, like I was pedaling and actually out there cranking. But it did make me go a little bit faster, a little bit farther, and it took the edge off just a little bit so I wasn't straining myself out there. Now again, that's a very efficient motor pairing to, uh, with the battery to see nearly 85 miles of ride time. Something we've never seen on EBR before. So absolute two thumbs up to the Mod Black for 
such stellar range test results. Next up for the Mod Black is the circuit test. Now the EBR circuit is a one mile loop with a 30 foot climb and we do six different laps, one in each pedal assist setting and one with no motor assistance at all. This helps us kind of see the speed profile of the bike as well as get a sense of the motor engagement. Now with the Mod Black, we started off at about 12 and a half miles per hour with no motor assistance, jumping up to 14 and a half when we turned the motor on, and we saw about a one and a half to two mile per hour jump at each different pedal assist setting. Now, I love to see that. I love to see that you can really dictate how fast you want to be going by choosing different pedal assist settings. We have a lot of different bikes that we test that's a little bit flat in those first two or three levels and then jumps up significantly. So kudos to Mod for dialing in the speed on this bike. Now, another thing that I really enjoyed was the motor engagement. This is a torque sensor on a mid-drive motor, which means it gives you a very natural feel and really just feels like you are being boosted as you pedal. It does not do the work for you. It just makes the work a little lighter, a little easier, a little bit more fun. Now, as we were out there and climbing up that hill, it does pretty well with the climb. It also corners pretty well. Those 27 and a half by three inch tires, they do well on the road and they held up fairly well on the dirt and sand that we put this in as well. Overall, I think this bike's motor is tuned and dialed in correctly. And I think people are really going to enjoy it as they're out there on the roads. Next up, I wanna talk a little bit about the handling and the cockpit layout on the Mod Black. Now, the first thing you have are these faux leather grips uh, on either side. And then on the left-hand side there, you'll notice the controller for the pedal assist setting, which does include a walk button as well, which is a nice feature to have for when you're off your bike but need a little help moving it around. In the center, we have the LCD display. It's a fairly simple black and white. It is nice though, because it does have a password setting on there, so you can make it a little bit more difficult for someone to take off with your bike and not give them any help from the motor at least. On the right-hand side is the seven-speed shifter. It's an L2A2. It's worked very well for us with the rapid fire triggers. The shifting's always felt pretty uh, crisp as it connects back to the Shimano Altus derailleur in the rear. And then of course it does have a small little bell completing the overall theme of it being a commuter bike. Now, it, in the center here, there's a stem that is an adjustable stem. It's really nice. It says on Mod's website that they are able to accommodate riders from five foot four up to seven foot one. Now, while I can't speak to the seven foot one crowd, we did have our six foot five tester ride on it and he said he felt fairly comfortable. It is nice to see bikes that claim to be a one size fits all, just to have things in there that do allow for some uh, adjustment to really dial in your correct fit. Now, the frame of the bike is an aluminum frame with the uh, battery integrated very nicely into the frame there. I think it actually looks very nice and sharp with the uh, cursive detailing of the uh, black right there. And then of course with the battery and the mid-drive motor, it does keep the weight of the bike towards the middle, which is very good for handling. Overall, it's predictable. It's not anything uh, that takes much of an adjustment to get used to. Now up on the front, we do have a Suntour uh, XCT fork with 80 millimeters of travel. Uh, it held up fairly nicely through our testing. We did take this bike into some pretty extreme areas. We wanted to really put it to its limits and test its capabilities. We were always fairly happy with how the front fork performed as well as this rear suspension here as well. In the rear, we have the EXA air suspension. I didn't notice it bottom out or anything at any point over the course of our testing. So it does really enhance your overall commutes, keep you comfortable in that way. And then it helps absorb some of that chatter when you do take the bike off-roading. Uh, again, this is all riding on 27 and a half by three Kenda Havoc tires. I do like this. I think it is that kind of perfect balance between something you can commute comfortably on and do well with cornering, as well as being just rugged enough to handle some dirt and sand if you do take it off-road. It's not something that you're necessarily looking to ride around in anything overly technical or like going over any big tree roots or anything like that, but the bike overall holds up quite nicely. Now you'll be riding on this uh, gel saddle right here, which I thought was actually like the perfect amount of squishiness for like my comfort preference. Um, and then the geometry of the bike overall is just fairly upright. Again, it does, I think when you first look at the bike, you get the sense that it's more mountain bike than commuter, but how it actually feels when you're out on the road is much more commuter, especially with how upright you are and your back won't feel fatigued after long rides, which this bike is definitely capable of. Overall, I think it handles pretty well. If you are off-roading, I think it does pretty well in some of those kind of like touring areas where you are on some more smoothed out trails. 
it is most at home there. We did test it again, putting it to its limits, going on some very steep things, but I don't know that I would want to test the longevity of some of the componentry. It's all nice, but it is a little bit more on the budget end of the spec. So if you keep it, however, mostly on paved areas and those light trails, I think it's gonna hold up pretty well for you in the long haul. For our final test, we have the hill test. Now, every bike we review here at EBR, we take to Hellhole, which is a third of a mile long at a 12% average grade. Now, this is in a pretty extreme hill, which we specifically chose because we want to put motors to the limit. Again, the Mod Black comes equipped with a 350 watt Shangy mid-drive motor capable of 90 newton meters of torque. I had a pretty high expectations going into the hill test on this, and I think that the bike largely met it. Now, overall, we reached the top in a minute and 33 seconds at an 11.7 mile per hour pace. Now, the reason I'm happy with that result, even though it is a little bit slower than some of the other results we've gotten, is because it's not always overall speed that matters, but it's the feeling on the hills that matter. Again, the Mod Black really excels at being a bike that enhances what you do as a rider. It makes your pedal go a little bit further, a little bit faster, and takes the edge off of you as a rider. I actually appreciated how this thing reached the top of the hills, both on paved and on off-road hills. As a matter of fact, I was surprised with some of the areas we were able to take this to off-road and some of the hills I was able to climb. Now, the only thing that I think I would maybe change on the Mod Black is the gearing. It comes with seven different gearing options, which is adequate, I would say, but especially in some of those off-road situations for a little bit more variance when you're going up or down a hill, I'd love to see an eighth or maybe even a ninth option. I realize that does increase the price though, so you can't have everything. But as far as overall hill climbing capabilities, I'd say the Mod Black does a pretty good job with the bang for your buck that you're getting on this bike. Now, as I said in the beginning of this review, this is a bike that really combines two different types of riding into one bike, and I think it largely does it pretty well. Overall, it's definitely more commuter than anything else, but the features that it includes from mountain bikes does make it very capable on trails. It's a commuter that you can do a little off-roading on. It's a touring bike you can haul a little bit with. It kind of fits the bill of whatever it is you need it to be, because at the end of the day, it's an e-bike and they are very versatile compared to traditional bikes. There is a lot that I like on the Mod Black. As I mentioned before, the range test results that we achieved on this are some of the best we have ever seen. Up to 80 miles on a single charge is phenomenal. And I love that you can have that kind of motor and battery efficiency. I like how it climbs to the top of hills. It's confidence inspiring that you are going to feel in control as you reach that hill, but it's you reaching that hill with assistance from the bike, not the bike doing it for you. Now, there are a couple of things that I would maybe look to change. I'm never a big fan of having faux leather grips on something that's designed to go off-roading. If your hands get a little sweaty at all, I find they can get a little bit slippery, which I don't fully love. And I do wish there was maybe an eighth or even a ninth gearing option. That being said, I think that the fact that it does have this drivetrain setup and those grips, that's not a deal breaker for me in the slightest. Now, at the end of the day, Mod has put together a very unique package here that will serve people well. Utility is the name of the game, and you can use this in so many different ways that I think it's going to appeal to a lot of different riders. Now, if you found this review helpful, please give us a like down below. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing to the Electric Bike Report channel, and then we will leave links in the description below where you can see current pricing as well as the full detailed written review where we will include more of our test data back at the EBR website. Again, I'm Griffin Hales, and thanks for watching.